Hey everybody. Um, uh, so I wanted to demo a little bit of code that I wrote that um, can export issues from GitLab based on some criteria and can also um, then do a few actions to it. It's all um, simple scripts written in Go um, that I basically customize the script every time that I need to run it. So it's not like a really extensible sort of thing. But if you do need to update lots of issues and like yesterday I had to apply the group label for continuous integration to something like 2,000 issues. Um, this made it, um, you know, realistic to do that without going crazy. Um, so I'll share my screen um, and show you the project. Um, so it's this, the GLIX is the name of the project, which stands for GitLab Issue Exporter. Um, and it's made up of a, a few different things, but the core is this library, um, which has a few functions in it. Um, it can, query a group, um, so like GitLab org, and get back all of the issues based on some search criteria. It can also query a single project. It can also get information about a single issue. Um, generate query string is something that's used internally, uh, so is HTTP request, and the result set is kind of like the data structure for um, how it works. So I guess those are the, the main modes of operation. Um, getting uh, list of issues and then doing something to the issues. Uh, one of these actually is a, um, or maybe I'm just using this for it, but uh, what I'm typically doing is getting this list of issues back based on whatever criteria I've selected and then running an API command over and over and over again uh, on it. So like run the API command to apply a label over and over and over to everything that's in the set. Um, there's a couple of um, pre-made Programs here that are um, that use that library that I use pretty frequently. The client is the um, I guess the main um, the main thing that I use to generate the CSVs. It does require you to set an environment variable with your personal access token. Uh, so I'm going to do that off screen now um, in a different window, uh, just so that that's and that it'll have the API scope for the PAT, right? Exactly. It's it's essentially using my account. And actually, I think I may be already. Uh, yeah, I, I've actually already done this in this window, so uh, we're good to go. Um, so it does require that you set this environment variable. It'll tell you that you need to if you don't, um, if you don't have it already done. But what it does is it takes the parameters that are up here. So group ID 9970 is GitLab um, org. Um, and you can find that by like right clicking on the, the page and you can find it in this or there might be some easier way to do it. Um, if you set project ID instead of group ID, um, then it will um, search on the project instead. If there's a simple if statement in here, I don't know exactly what will happen if you set both, it'll probably do both. Um, and then the search label that you're looking for. So the last time I was using this, the um, I was searching for everything that had the label pipeline, but you could put anything in here. So like um, a category label, a direction label, anything. Um, and it will find everything in this project that has that label and then export it to a CSV. So if I bring um, this over here, typically the way I um, the way that I use this is um, I'll start with the client uh, and then I'll um, open up the uh, main.go and then change this to what I'm looking for. And you can see it's actually even a little different than what I have there because I've been, the way I use this is I, I just edit it in real time. So what this will search for now is everything that has a DevOps verify label. That returns a lot. So I'm gonna search for something simpler like maybe um, group testing. Uh, so if I now run, um, run this program, Hopefully it doesn't take too long, um, but it'll just kind of go in the background and you'll see that it exports a CSV file um, or CSV output, which is comma separated. Yeah. Um, so if I open this up a little bit so we can see uh, each row has the link to the issue and then other fields that come with it. And one of the fields is the um, uh, it, it is, is saying that label. So if, if you, we look in here for group testing, yeah, we'll find all the group testing issues. And so what I would do normally is I'll put this to a CSV file somewhere like, um, uh, what are we searching for? Testing.csv. <coughs> it'll take just about the same amount of time. 
Um, and then now if we look at that, um, one thing that it does right now that's uh, sort of a bug that I have to fix is it has this um, header um, where you can see the name of each column. That's actually valuable if you are opening this up as a CSV file, but if you're going to then feed this output into one of the other programs that I wrote, um, you should delete this. Uh, and you don't have to use Vim. Uh, I'm just old, so that's what I use. <laughs> um, the, uh, and then you've got the full list of issues here. So you could do things like, if you wanted, you could look at all of the rows here. There's 107 issues apparently with this label. I could manually go in here and delete the things that I don't want to update. Um, I could also do things like, um, uh, so cat, uh, cat testing.csv and then grep it for, um, uh, say I want to find things that have um, that testing label, but then also um, from there, only the ones that have code quality. Um, so if we count that, um, see that only matched 67 of the items. So I could then put this into another file that's called like testing code quality CSV or something like that. But uh, you can see I'm like trimming down the list in different ways. I'm doing it with shell commands. You can also just do it by hand, whatever makes the most sense. You could, as long as you end up with the CSV file that has the rows that you want. Um, then um, I have a couple of different programs that do, do different things. The labeler group thing was just um, uh, when I was doing uh, something else. But um, there's a labeler and the milestoneer and the unsubscriber. Um, the unsubscriber is for when I had, um, so when I was changing teams, uh, I had been subscribed to hundreds of issues, thousands of issues in a different project that I didn't care about anymore. So I have this program that uh, will get all of the issues that I'm personally subscribed to, and then I fed that into the unsubscriber, uh, which unsubscribed me for everything and sort of reset my account. There's no other way to do that. Um, but if we look at the labeler, for example, and obviously the labeler will apply an additional label, the milestoneer will apply a milestone to whatever else, but they all kind of work the same internally. Um, so if we look at main.go here, um, it's using the, the personal access token again, so all this runs as me. It opens up the CSV file that's referred to here, uh, and all of this stuff can be converted into arguments if uh, you wanted to improve it. Uh, and then it sets a new label here uh, as to what the label that it's going to apply. I, the reason it has some checks in here uh, is it's making sure that uh, the issue, and you can see it does a query issue on the issue that it gets from the CSV. Um, it makes sure that that issue doesn't already have the label that it's going to apply. If it does, it skips it. It's much faster this way. Um, and then, yeah, uh, all it does is generate a put query, an HTTP put query to our API using the access token um, to the issues API, um, where um, if you do that and you uh, give it the label list plus the one that's just added, then it will apply those labels to the issue. You can do this for any of the um, issues API stuff. So, like, uh, and if you look at the milestoneer uh, program, it's exactly the same program. Uh, it just pre makes a different API call uh, to update the milestone instead. Um, but there's all these things that you might want to do. You can um, you can change things about the issue. You can comment on an issue. You can um, pretty much do anything from the API that you can do from the web interface. Um, and the way that this runs um, is actually um, by hard coding the name of the script in here and then hard coding the name of the label that you want to apply, it will just iterate over that list and apply the label to everything. Um, because it um, skips items that already have it, typically what I'll do here um, is, I'm not going to run this because I don't wanna actually want it to do anything. Um, but when it runs, you'll see that it's like applying to this, applying to this, and like every half second, it'll do another one. So I'll let it do the first couple um, and then control C to cancel the program uh, and then go open up those first couple issues and make sure I didn't make a typo or that it's doing anything weird and unexpected. Uh, but if it's good, then I just let it let it go and uh, it'll update all the issues. So yeah, that's, awesome. um, that's pretty much it. It's not super user friendly or anything, but it does work. And um, if you have lots of issues to update, it's kind of the nicest way to do it. There is a bulk update feature that I want to make sure that you're aware of in the product. Um, for It works for smaller lists. So if we go to an issue search here, um, there's this edit issues button up in the corner. Uh, and you can select all these here. 
and then change milestone or there used to be other options here. I think it's, I think it's because I'm looking at a whole group. Um, I have less options because things can be different between groups. But maybe if I look at like GitLab CE, um, then um, go to the issues here. Yeah, uh, I have more options because these are guaranteed to be consistent with this single project. So I can update up to uh, 20 items at once uh, doing this. Um, so this is much easier if you only need to update about 20. You can get your search right and then update the 20 items in these way with the label milestone assigning or whatever. Uh, but I wish that this had, and I did make an issue request for this somewhere that like if you click on this, the way Google Mail does it is um, it asks you, do you want to just select the ones on this page or all the ones that are in the entire search? Um, maybe we wouldn't allow that for the 17,000 items in this kind of search, but if there's like 500 or 1,000 to update, um, I suppose it's better to do it 20 at a time than it is to do it one at a time, but it's, uh, it's pretty brutal. Another thing that I thought they were adding soon um, is the ability to maybe pick that you want on this page to see 100 at a time or something like that, which would make it a little bit quicker as well. Those are the options. Did I miss anything? Is that some, at least somewhat clear? I just had one clarifying question about the script. It's just, your script assumes the label already exists. This, right? I'm sure you could use the API to create a new label, but in this script, it assumes the label already exists. Right? It actually doesn't. The way the API works is um, this behavior is entirely in the API. If you add a label that doesn't exist, it will create a project label with that name, um, which is sometimes nice, but sometimes annoying. Like I had a typo once in a label that I applied, and so it was creating per project labels for everything. That's why it's good to just cancel after the first couple and make sure that it didn't do anything weird or unexpected like that. It's easier okay. to fix if there's a couple than you go do 100. This is awesome. I'm going to clone, yeah. clone this project. Uh, feel free to contribute to it as well. <laughs> it could use some improvements. Um, gotcha. Yeah, just to highlight in here that um, the API call for my, the milestone, and that's another refactoring that could be done is like, A, making these things take arguments and just be one script instead of these multiple ones. Uh, don't hard code all these different values in there, but take them from the command line, do some validation on them, um, and then maybe make it so that, um, oh yeah, here, here's one that adds a comment. Um, so you can see that it adds a, a comment in the API is called a note. So it adds a note, uh, whatever I was doing last time here, I felt that I should add a comment at the same time that I was doing it. So this is how it did that. So it makes one post query to add the comment. And then it, um, uh, it also makes a put query to add the milestone ID that I wanted it to add. So it was, but yeah, this was moving things to a new awaiting further demand milestone. And at the same time, I explained why that's the case. But yeah, but that's essentially what this program is. Which is just like my pages example, pretty much. Yeah, uh, you want to do something similar there? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, uh, the most important thing is, is really, I'll, I'll just repeat it one more time, is uh, let it only do a couple at a time so you don't uh, have it update a thousand things wrong, wrongly <laughs> and then have to go fix it. That's the, that's the worst that can happen with this kind of program. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for the demo. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.